joining today's broadcast. We appreciate all of you are joining us on this uh, edition of Making Disciples of All Nations. May God Almighty bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Let's just thank God and appreciate Him. Lord, we just thank you. We just appreciate you. We just give you all the glory and honor for the opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, we are delighted to sit in your presence. We are delighted that we may know you more. We are delighted that, Lord, you reveal yourself to us day by day. Because it's your revelation that brings glory upon our lives. For wherever the place of your feet is, wherever the place of your presence is, that's where the place of your glory is. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, let Christ be formed in us. Through these editions, O oh God Almighty, reveal yourself in mighty ways. Let's know you more. Let's love you more. Let's understand you more. Reveal your person more. Thank you, precious Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. So to this evening, like I said, welcome to the broadcast. Um, last week, we learned that a disciple is a pupil, is a learner, is a follower who has aligned himself to the commands, to the lifestyles, to the principles of a master, and the master being Jesus. We also mentioned that it's a lifetime commitment to follow and sit at his feet, learning regularly from him. We mentioned also that it's a voluntary thing. Whoever shall come after me, whoever, God continues to say, you know, come unto me. So it has to be our choice. A disciple can never be forced. A disciple can never be forced on a person because you count the cost and then you decide to follow after him. It's also a process of conforming to his image. That is, you take up your cross and you begin to follow him. So today we're going to actually look at what the process, what is involved, the process in taking up the cross and following after Jesus Christ. Conforming to his image, becoming a cross-carrying Christian. What does it really mean? What's the process before you can become a cross-carrying Christian? I want us to start with the foundation of something we learned last week. We look at Matthew 11, 28 to 30 last week. We emphasize on 28. Today, I want us to start with 29. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you find rest unto your soul. We mentioned that many of us who are driven to discipleship by the heavy loads, challenges, and things that you saw, and then you say, God, please, I come to you. Grant me rest. Praise the Lord. Teach me. Let me learn of you. Amen. This is one of the scriptures that actually spoke to me to start on the journey of discipleship. Learn of me and me can lowly in heart. In fact, the hallmark of any disciple is heart humility. I repeat it. For you to be a disciple, one of the major signs is heart humility. In other words, we begin to develop the mind of Christ. So in the process that we are looking at today, we are looking specifically at how you begin to deny yourself. Jesus said, if you come after me, take up your cross. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. In self-denial, we want to look at today. And in self-denial, one of the major things that triggers it is heart humility. Be developing the mind of Christ. Philippians 2, 5, 8 says, your mind and your attitude has to change to be the same like Christ. So let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but rather he made himself nothing. He took on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself unto death, even unto the death on the cross, and therefore God exalted him. So if you look at Philippians 2, 5 to 8, Jesus himself made himself nothing. 
A disciple is the one who comes after Jesus, develops the mind of Christ, and makes himself nothing. Jesus took the nature of a servant. He began to serve his disciples. He humbled himself to the will of the Father. He took on a heart of obedience, even got to the obedience on the, on the cross, obedient unto death. So that's why God highly exalted him. The way to exaltation in the kingdom of God, that is the route. It will go with the, through the cross. You go through the cross. You make yourself nothing. You deny yourself. You take on the nature of a servant. You serve. If there's anything to be done, be the one to do it. Don't let anybody call you to. He humbled himself. He didn't count his equality. He didn't count his position as being equal to God as anything. He didn't even grasp it. He himself abased himself. He made himself nothing. You see, this heart humility is very important for a disciple, and I explain why this quickly. Because you see, the opposite of heart humility is pride, ego, lack of loneliness of heart. When pride comes, the Bible says wherever there is pride, there's all sorts of confusion. What are the confusion? Competitions, envy, jealousies, works of the flesh, and all those things. So when you have this lowliness of heart or heart humility, you learn that you're not better than anyone else. You know that everything God does in your life, he will do it for any other person who presses in the way you are pressed in. God is not partial. It depends on your dependence on him. It depends on how plugged in you are to him. It depends on how much of a disciple you choose to be, following after him, how closely you follow. That's what determines what happens in your life. As we behold him, we are changed into the same image from one level of glory to another. If you see somebody revealing great glory, maybe they followed him. Then you to start following so, what am I saying, brethren, when you come to a place of learning this heart humility, the mind of Christ, in Philippians 2, 5 to 8, we are, saying, we are reading, when you learn that it, everything is about God, Jesus Christ worked for the will of the Father. It wasn't about him. It wasn't self. That, that's the mind of Christ. It wasn't about his ambition. He said, I live to do the will of my Father who sent me. So when you do things, your motives are different. For example, two people can do the same thing. A disciple has a different motive. Somebody who is seeking flesh has a different motive. When a disciple defends the tough or the areas of responsibility God has given them, it's not because of their ambition. It's not to show off. It's not self-advancement. It's not self-propagation. It's faithfulness to duty. When Jesus Christ took the cane to flush the temple, the reason he did it was the zeal of the Lord's house has consumed him. He had an understanding that he had to protect the flock and tend the garden, the sheep that God has given him and hinder wolves from coming in. So what am I saying? Let, when you have the mind of Christ, yourself no longer drives you, no longer drives your purpose. It's duty, responsibility. Carrying out the purpose of the heavenly father that begins to drive you. Like Jesus said, you begin to say, my meat is to do the will of my father and finish his work. Like Jesus said, we would say the zeal of the Lord's house has consumed me to carry out his purpose. You decide that the feet of God's, the place of God's feet, the place of his presence, the place of his glory and power must be cleansed. Praise the Lord. So when we learn properly from Jesus Christ our Lord, he removes the self-life. He makes us kingdom-focused. You see, people who have the mind of Christ, we find rest for our souls. There's no competition. There's no expectation of grandeur. Amen? You have crucified yourself. Like Apostle Paul, you have learned to abase and abound. You know, when I, the places I enjoyed ministry the most, I've gone for ministry in places. The place I enjoy ministry the most are even the place that you see that you learn to abase there. You understand? You enter into a church, maybe there's total sand there. They can't even have enough money to pave the ground. And you kneel 
on that side, because you have a covenant with God, I must worship God before starting ministry. That those are the places I've seen God move the most. Not the auditoriums that have five thousand, ten thousand people. So you find rest for your soul. There's no grandioseness. There's no you. You are crucified. You learn to abase and abound. When we learn of Jesus, when we develop His mind, brethren, we become cross-carrying Christian following after Jesus. So today we are looking at that process of becoming cross-carrying Christians. In Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said to his disciples, Matthew 16, 24, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. These are the three processes a cross-carrying Christian must develop and start to do. If you've chosen to follow after Jesus, you first deny yourself. Tonight, specifically, we'll look at denying yourself, what it means. From next week, we'll look at taking up your cross. Praise the Lord. So when you learn of him, you learn to deny yourself, the self-life. You take up your cross, you follow him. I've seen, why I'm emphasizing this tonight, is that in the past 26 years, I've been in full-time ministry. By the grace of God, people, I've seen people mightily used of God. I've seen small success go into their head. I've seen God cut them off. The simple reason is that because God will not glorify the self-life. In fact, the Bible tells us God resists the proud and he gives his grace to the humble. Pride makes God see Satan in his life. Because Satan was a first prideful cherub who caused rebellion in heaven. And took down angels with him. So God never plays with pride. He resists. He opposes. He hinders. He restrains. It's time to ensure that the pride does not move. But he gives grace, speed, glory to the humble. That's why as a disciple, your first signature was humility. You see, man looks for methods. God is searching for men with heart humility, the mind of Christ. God is looking for acceptable life before acceptable service. Before anybody can be useful for him, if their life must be acceptable. They must develop the mind of Christ. So this is why Jesus Christ told people that you want to be my disciple. You want to follow me. I remember last week we said, it is in Antioch that the Christians were first called disciples. In other words, every disciple is a Christian. Any Christian who is not a disciple is not a Christian. So you call yourself a Christian, you're a convert, and you're not a disciple, you are not a true Christian. Because the Bible says in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was talking to his disciples when he said, to them, if any man will come after me, deny yourself life, take up your cross and follow me. So these three processes of cross-bearing Christian that we need to look at is self-denial we'll look at today. Deny yourself life starts with number one thing, repentance. You must decide to repent. You must develop the mind of Christ. And you must be converted. That's what it means to deny yourself. You, you, de you, you develop, you first repent of who you are. You develop the mind of Christ. And then you are converted. Today we'll look at repentance and developing the mind of Christ. In the process of denying yourself. Praise the Lord. So repentance. What does it mean to repent? In Matthew 4, 17 we read. From that time Jesus began to preach. He was crying out. Repent. Change your mind for the better. Utterly amend your ways. Abhor your past sins for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So you see that when you are repenting, you change your mind for the better. You, you, you know, you are like, you are ready for change. You know the way you are going is not the right way. You are ready to amend your ways. You are ready to abhor your past sins. Somebody may be listening to me tonight. Look at the example of pride we mentioned. That God resists and opposes the proud. You find out you are in ministry for long. There's no grace. There's no speed. God is not moving you forward. Then it's time to repent. 
It's time to ask God that, Lord, I'm broken before you. Give me the mind of Christ. I want to learn of you. He said, come to me. Learn of me. For I'm lowly in heart. And you find rest for your soul. I want to learn of you. That is the solution to it. You see, true repentance always has a story to tell. This is who I was. This is who I am now. Praise the Lord. And that's why in Luke 13, 5, Luke 13, 5, Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you will likewise perish and be lost. We need to change. Look at the major sins in your life and you need to make a determination to change because sin has consequences. You need to change and begin to look at following God's ways. You know, no, unless you repent, you will perish. May we not perish in Jesus' name. May we not be lost in the name of Jesus. So Jesus is telling us that the first foundation of becoming his disciple or a cross-carrying Christian is repentance. It's not that you are a convert, ever learning, ever coming to the true knowledge of God. You know, you have decided, I want to be a disciple. I'm not going the right way. I need Jesus to start following him. Disciples are people who have decided to align themselves to obey the commands of Jesus Christ. We mentioned this last week. You decided my life must be aligned with Christ. Let God's will in heaven be done in my life on earth. So every disciple basically is also a kingdom person. You are seeking first the kingdom of God if you are a disciple. Because you are looking for alignment of your life first. Let your will be done here on earth as it's done in heaven. It starts with you. In my life, let your will be done. Let my life be in alignment with Christ. Let grace flow from his throne unto his own. That's your desire. You start this by denying yourself. Developing the mind of Christ. And I pray God Almighty will help us to do that in Jesus' name. So when Apostle Paul said in Acts 17.30, Acts 17.30, he said, such former ages of ignorance, God, is, it is true, has ignored it. He allowed it to pass unnoticed. But now, but now, he charges all people everywhere to repent. So in past ages, we've, the church got away with it, bringing people into the church and saying, well, these are converts. They've given their life to Christ. And meanwhile, there's no repentance there's no conversion. There's no renewal of the mind. There's no mind of Christ. And you see people who are in church, they behave even worse than those who are in the world. They are not disciples. They are not followers of Jesus Christ. And God ignored all those former ages of ignorance. A lot of mess was done in his name. God ignored it. He allowed it to pass unnoticed. But what I've noticed in this season, God is judging all those things. So it's charging everyone, everywhere now to repent. Pastors will need to repent for the errors they've done. Individuals will need to repent. People who refuse to follow Jesus and they were doing worldliness, you know, when they call themselves Christians, they will need to repent. To repent means to turn around, change, be transformed. It represents a conversion or change of direction. It's a departure from the ways of the world. It's a departure from your own ways, the ways that seems right unto you. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man. The end is destruction. It's a departure from the ways of the world. The Bible says, love more the world than the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the world, love of the Father is not in him. And he mentions the three things in the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. You have to depart from those three because that is the world system. You have to depart from the way that seems right in your own eyes, your own ways. It leads to destruction. You have to depart from the ways of your forefathers. Especially in Africa, that's a major problem. The church is following the ways of our forefathers. They are mixing the ways of tradition with the ways of Jesus Christ. And therefore, they are not bringing children unto God into maturity. Instead, they are opening the doors of the lives of Christians, to demonic possession, to harassment and families, and so on and so forth. Because they are following the way of tradition. Whatever you bring to mix with Christianity, that's the place you have opened the door to the devil to be able to operate and have incursions. 
So the church needs to come back to repent, to turn around, to change, to be transformed, converted from the direction we are going. Departures from the ways of the world. Departures from the ways that seems right in our own eyes. Departures from the ways of our forefathers and the ways of men. We need to remove our eyes from that and stop following these former ways and choose to follow Jesus Christ with the way, with the truth, with the life. When anybody follows him, they find life. They find the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. There are multitudes in bondage in Africa because we have not been told the truth. So we need to follow. We need to repent and change. So these are the ways we need to repent from and embrace the ways of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ said, begin, the preaching was crying out, repent, change your mind for the better, amend your ways. We need to amend these ways. You have to have abhorrence for your past sins. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven manifests the more there are many disciples who choose to repent, change for the better, and mend their ways, and begin to follow the ways of Jesus Christ. We must change our minds. We must start eating our past ways. We must amend our ways. You know, you see a lot of um, Christian marriages. 70% of it is tradition in Africa. And it affects, you see, when you mix it, it affects so many things. It affects the children, it affects the outcomes, it affects, affects the service of God. Praise the Lord. God Almighty will deliver us and help us to amend our ways, to repent in Jesus' name. You have to know God's ways are different from our ways. God has his way of doing everything. You know, a lot, some things I noticed when I started studying about the ways of God, I wrote a book, Walking in God's Ways. I noticed that the, uh, the ways of prosperity of the world is grasping, grabbing, you know. Uh, uh, that's why the Bible says unbelievers pursue after these things. But in the kingdom, it's not so. The ways, in the ways of prosperity for the kingdom, it is so in. As a disciple, it is so in. The more you give, the more you receive. Give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure to which you give, that is the measure you will receive. Prosperity that is godly is about giving in the kingdom. In the opposite, in the world, it is grabbing. If you are like that and you have seen poverty, change your ways. Repent. Relig um, relationship with God, religion as we know it, or Christianity as we know it, the world system tells us that it's a kind of religion. Where you decide, this is how I want to reach out to God. God can work in my, on Sunday, I can go midweek, but in my business, I shut God out. In my marriage, it's my life. In my career, it's my life. That is religion. You dictate how you reach God. When it comes to salvation that is working in God's way, it is for you to have an understanding that it's relationship. It is submitting your life and handing over your life to God. And say, I want to relate to you as my leader. Become, begin to lead me in the way I should go. So, brethren, we need to utterly amend our ways as his followers. That's when we'll start getting results of the kingdom. As we walk in God's ways and God's principles, that's when we see changes. You see, God is a principled God. He has his own ways. And his ways lead to peace, to life. The Bible says, narrow is a way to lead to, that leads to God. And few people find it. Why is a way that leads to hell and many are going that way? That's why we are calling you back by discipleship. Come to cross-carrying Christianity. It may be a narrow way, but it's the only way where you will learn God's ways and the principles that govern his creation. And you begin to enjoy your Christianity. Praise the Lord. So the more we follow God, the most, more we start walking in God's ways. We become spiritually matured. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, I was once a child. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I've become a man, I am done with childish, childish ways. I put them aside. When you stop walking in childish ways and change your ways, that is when you begin to follow Jesus. As a Christian, I mentioned last week that 31 years ago, when I gave my life to Christ, for the first five years, I had a lot of turbulence as a Christian, a lot of attacks. 
as a Christian. The devil wanted to kill me on several occasions, you know, as a Christian. But it was that that made me hear God. I went on a retreat and God said, come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Learn of me. That's when I became a disciple. I started lying at his feet. I bought six applications of Bible. I would sit down, open each one of them, began to search out everything in the Bible, every promise in the Bible. Lord, I want to experience it. I don't want half of you. I want to go all the way. And as I began to do that, I left childish ways. Childish ways. It was an experience. I've shared with people before. You know, the first encounter I had after that was, I think I went to the bank one day, the bank I used to work in. And there was a lady who was um, like, no, she wanted in Nigeria, she wanted to be bribed. And I refused to pay any bribe. So I went there and she delayed me for about two hours. She didn't know I was working there before. And then later, the senior manager came, who was one of my colleagues when I was in the bank. So the man now said, how can you do this? So he brought her in and he told me to tell her off. <laughs> so I told her off and the girl started crying. And I got home, I wanted to talk to God. And God said, I don't want to hear. I said, what happened? He said, you didn't walk in the ways of our kingdom. He said, you have to go to that girl and apologize. I said, well, you saw what she did. God said, go back and apologize. So I went to her the next day. And I said, look, I'm sorry. Um, I know that what you did was wrong, but I was too. And the girl began to tell me, we f I found out she worshiped in the church I worship in. I found out that all she needed was to be counseled and to be developed, you know, to, to grow in God and know that she shouldn't be grabbing, demanding, asking for bribes. Praise the Lord. What am I trying to tell you? What I'm saying is that when we walk in God's ways, we start living childish ways. That way of telling her off, doing it the fleshly way, you understand? It was childishness. But when we begin to walk after Christ, he tells you, he begins to lead you as a disciple. This is my way of oppression. This is a way of my kingdom. This is a way of my reasoning. That girl, I began to follow her up as a Christian and she developed. Kingdom way is always different from the ways of the world. So when you begin to be a disciple, you stop walking in error. You are determined to reconcile and recognize and search for God's ways of doing things. You become progressively better. That's what Jesus Christ was saying there. You know, he said, repent, change your mind for the better. Matthew 4, 17. Actually, amend your ways. It's a daily walk. I went out that day, I faced that. In fact, at a point in time, I began to say, I began to take care of my conduct. Because I knew if I miss a step, God will send me to go and apologize. And that would be more humiliating. That started changing my character. Amend your ways. Have an abhorrence for your past sins. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Discipleship is learning at his feet. Removing our childish ways. Walking like him. Starting walking after his instruction. Stop walking in error. You are determined to recognize. Search for God's way of doing things. Then you start becoming progressively better. That's why in Hebrews 3.10, God said, And so I was provoked, displeased, sorely grieved with that generation. For they were always erring or in error and they were led astray by their own hearts they have not perceived they've not recognized my ways and they and they have not become progressively better more and more the more you perceive god's ways the more you change you deny yourself and follow god's instructions the more you become progressively better so when you learn to walk in god's ways when you learn of christ you realize that God blesses men and women according to his ways. To be a blessed Christian, you have to learn to walk in God's ways. In Jeremiah 17.10, we read, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the heart. He wants to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his dreams. This is awesome, brethren. You are a disciple. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody tonight. There are things that have not been working in your life. God gives every man according to his ways. I want you to meditate on that. It's the ways you work that determines how God relates with you. According to the fruit of their dreams, in what you are doing, not what you are saying, that God uses to bless you. 
So as a disciple, that's where people, when you bring discipleship, that's where blessings are. That's where provision is. That's where increase is. Yes, Jesus said if you leave everything for his sake, you leave your father, mother, houses, and every other thing for his sake, he said you will, he will give you tenfold there or not with persecution. So disciples of Jesus Christ, they find blessings if they genuinely do what Christ is in in his word. Because God begins to give you according to the fruit of your ways. When you start developing the fruit of the spirit, God begins to bless you. Those people, because you denied yourself and you are able to bring them to maturity, God blesses you on, on their account. The fruits that you are, he bless you according to, to the fruit of your dreams. May God Almighty help us and begin to bless us in Jesus' name. I'll move forward because of our time. So God rewards according to the ways we choose to walk in. Not according to the level of what you know mm -mm. or the level of service you are doing. I've sat through scripture. I saw that it's only our life, our lifestyle, the fruits that come out of it that determines God's blessings upon our lives. In other words, it's obedience to God's instruction that releases, that's a key to blessings. So you can serve if you are not obedient. You can know the word a lot if you are not obedient. If your life and the fruits that come out is not in compliance with God's instruction, blessings don't come. I pray that the church of God, because God is coming for a glorious church without wrinkle, without stain, a blessed church, an anointed church, an empowered church, a righteous church. And I'm praying you'll be part of it in the name of Jesus. Let's start amending our ways. Let's check our ways. Let's begin to know that God gives every man according to their ways and the fruit of their dreams. And let's change our behavior. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So Christianity is about us showing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not about performance. It's about a lifestyle. It's about showing that, look, it comes out, it's automatic. Fruits come out of a life, of whatever is flowing. This is what God is looking for. And that's why Jesus Christ, he showed us in the parable, he caused the unfruitful fig tree. He tells us in the parable of the vine and the branches, he tells us that he's the vine, we are the branches, that God is the husband man. He cuts off every branch that is not producing good fruits. The Bible says, let men see your good fruit and glorify your Father in heaven. The only reason we are here is to be fruitful, is to reveal and emit the glory of God. So if you are not doing it, you begin to find problems. God begins to prune some people. So that they can bring forth much fruit. So you begin to see harm and say, what is happening? It's because of you didn't allow the world to change you. So God is using circumstances. He's pruning, cutting down, making sure that you are fruitful. And those who refuse and gives up on, he cuts them out. He said, he irritates them and casts them into the fire. May that not be a caution in Jesus' name. So Apostle Paul realized this. And he made an informed decision as a disciple. That for his own life to glorify God, his sinful nature that leads mankind away from God and obedience to him must die. That's why he began to say it in Romans 8.13. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live by the Holy Spirit. Like I mentioned, when I was cutting off, when I was like, ah, no, God said I won't talk to you except to do this. The reason, it's painful. Following Jesus, denying yourself is painful. You know, you, you know your rights. The things are normally, you had a right to be annoyed because you are mistreated. You had a right, but Apostle Paul said, look, by the Holy Spirit, I put to death the misdeeds of the body so I can live. You have to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Give me the mind of Christ. Help me to crucify myself. Praise the Lord. And I'm praying that you will begin to live in Jesus' name. Apostle Paul said, for me to die is gain and to live is Christ. The more we live in Christ, the more we begin to see glory. And I pray Christ will manifest in us in Jesus' name. I pray that by, as we live by the Spirit, we will no longer fulfill the lust of our flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will pull all those things off from our lives. And Satan will no longer gain advantage over us in Jesus' name. So God will help us in Jesus' name. I think as we conclude, this self-denial starts by making choice to follow Jesus. I think we can't finish today because of our time, because we don't want this to be too long. So I think next week we'll look at the mind of Christ, 
which is the other part of making sure that you deny yourself. Self-denial. We'll look at developing the mind of Christ next week. But as we conclude today, let's begin to make choices that come after Jesus. Let's learn of him. Let's be meek and lowly in our heart. So we find rest for our souls. Let's develop looking at the ways of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray before we go this evening. I want us to use the words of Philippians 2, 5, 8 to pray. I want you to pray that, Lord, let this mind be in me, the same attitude that was, it was in Jesus Christ. Who did not consider equality with Jesus, anything to grasp. Let me stop grasping for position, for power, for equality. Lord, help me to make myself nothing. Help me to take up the form of a servant. That if there's any work to do, I just want to serve. Help me, Lord Almighty. Help me, Lord, to humble myself and become obedient to the Father even unto death. That whatever you need to do, give me the grace to do it, Lord. I'm praying that this, that you will help me today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lord. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor and adoration. Tonight, we thank you for tuning in with us. I pray that you'll be mightily blessed. And that as you begin to follow the way, the truth, and the life, he will begin to reveal himself to you more and more as you choose to repent today and change your ways and amend your ways. Between now and next week, I believe God will give you many opportunities, as he did with me when I made the decision. So many opportunities as you begin to watch and amend your ways and avoid your past deeds and follow after the kingdom lifestyle. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace in the name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you richly. Have a good evening.